All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Ankesh Kumar up in Palo Alto in Northern California. How are you doing, Ankesh? Good, John. Thank you very much. Hope you're well. Yeah, great. And I'm here in uh, San Diego as usual. And Ankesh is an inventor, entrepreneur, leader, husband, father, and friend, which is a great, great combination. And he's the founder and CEO of Let'sChat.com. And today we're going to talk about personalized prospecting. So, um, Ankesh, um, a lot of people, you know, salespeople, when they listen to this, okay, they'll hear the personalized bit and they'll go, oh, sounds interesting. And then they hear prospecting and they'll go, ooh. So um, what, give me your definition of what you mean by personalized prospecting. Yeah, it's, I mean, fairly simple. It's, it's basically using uh, some insight or topic uh, that the prospect can relate to, to, to build a bridge. Um, um, you know, you mentioned you're from Dublin. So if yep. I went to a good Irish pub there or to the Guinness factory and I mentioned that, that would get me, uh, you know, a little bit more higher attention in, in your uh, in, in your inbox as opposed to someone that doesn't mention that. In the same yep. way, I'm a Liverpool fan. If someone said that to me, you know, so it's finding those little nuggets uh, professionally or personally that you can use to sort of uh, at least at the very least, I mean, people might know that you're sort of, uh, you know, you're using this to to, uh, to, right. to get to, to gain favor, but at least you've taken the effort. And then some people will give you credit for that and say, well, look, the guy's taking effort. He's not just like another number on his list. Yeah. Well, as an Arsenal supporter, I might delete your email, but okay. that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a good it's a good point because I mean what we've seen more and more of obviously as things become more automated and it's 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 easy for people to be lazy and to send rote and to think that if I just go dear first name or hi first name that somehow I personalized my communication, mm -hmm. but I'm sending the same thing to everybody. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think your point on automation is is well taken. I was actually in, in your neck of the woods. I was in San Diego a couple of years ago at uh, 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 a sales automation. I won't mention the company. I mean, mm -hmm. we all know who the big ones are. And and one of the sales reps was saying early, earlier on in the evening, it was a uh, very happy hour and he was having a glass of wine. So this is a very casual conversation saying, oh, yeah, so I, I automate, I, you know, through automation, sent the prospect 25 emails and finally the prospect responded and said, I'm only going to give you uh, 30 minutes just to stop you sending me messages. And I'm like, man, this is not where we want to be. You know, the automation no. is great and it makes lazy salespeople. Um, you know, but the downside of personalization, it does require effort as opposed to this automation. And I think that prospects are seeing that. I mean, they're, they're seeing that they're getting a lot. I mean, even, this, you know, anyone in management, any, any, you know, every salesperson gets automated messages. And, you know, you should just put yourself in the shoes of, you know, of, of your prospects and how they would feel. You, you, you've been in yourself. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is because it is. It does become that. Uh, it becomes a great way of filling numbers if that's what you want to do. If you want to just play a numbers game, it's a great way of filling numbers. But as you say, um, you know, we're so inundated with them that we're almost immune to them now. It's just like delete, yeah. delete, delete. So, what are some of the more creative ways that you can um, personalize your outreach? Well, there's a few do's and don'ts. I mean, and, and, mm -hmm. and I, I'll give you sort of this, there's this, this, a bunch in the gray area, right? So, uh, you know, uh, I think some of the best salespeople that I've spoken to make a real concerted effort to go to as, as many social sites as possible. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, I'll give you one example of a sales rep that went to SoundCloud and found the kind of music that a prospect liked. And part mm -hmm. of his outreach message was saying, um, you know, I forget the name of the band, was like, oh my God, my, my, Director sales love it. He plays mentioned a particular song every Monday morning before our sales call, um, and you know so that 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 kind of that kind of stuff is is good. But the, the gray area, you know, is like, well, how far do you go? Do you want to say, hey, I saw on Facebook you were hanging out with the kids in the park on Saturday afternoons, like yeah. <laughs> almost story. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. yeah so I so that that's kind of where you draw the line. I've had a lot of conversations, and some people say if someone's posting it on a public forum then it's all fair game. Um, but, I mean, I think you have to decide yourself. I think the the easiest way that, that we found it uh, to, to work is, you know, um, if it's company information on social channels like YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, 
that's okay. Um, and and then you can, if, you, if the other challenge is finding the right person on, on, on those social channels, because if you've got a John Smith or mm-hmm. you know, it's really hard to go to Instagram and, and find the right person that corresponds to the company, for example, Cisco or Oracle or whatever else. So that's always been a challenge. And that's one of the challenges of uh, personalized prospecting is it's, it's extremely time consuming. Um, but so I, I think that, you know, commenting on people's LinkedIn posts, liking, but actually not just commenting, but also providing some level of insight. And mm-hmm. so for example, if someone's talking about like today, the, the price of oil is actually negative, but just, yep. you know, if someone posted something about that, oh, you know, like a, a joke on the LinkedIn, but not, I can drive, I can drive from here to LA for free, you know? Yeah, and exactly. Then, then actually put something like, for example, there was a New York article, Times article I was reading and, you know, quote something from that or actually even link to the article and say, yeah, I think on this particular topic that you were talking about, you know, maybe not that verbose, but here's a really interesting article in the New York Times that you might like. And so you've not only sort of, uh, kind of being acknowledged for that, but also providing some value add to that situation. So I think that's really high level uh, personalized prospecting. Yeah. And I think there that the the key point there, though, is that you have to put a little bit of effort into it. Right. So, I mean, number one, you should actually read the post uh, rather than just, again, take the lazy route of just going, oh, great post, even though you've never even read it just to yeah, right. get it. But I mean, I think, yeah, if you put a little work in, if you read it, if you comment on the post, as you say, if you add a bit of value, that's hugely uh you know, that's that's hugely enticing to the person who wrote the article or who shared the thing in the first place because they're like, feel like they're getting recognition for it. Mm-hmm. So it immediately gives you a little bit of a connection. You become a, kind of like more of a consultative salesperson. Yeah. 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 And, and it, it is harder work. And, and I think that, I think, you know, uh, because of the automation and this is, I mean, so the same, same sales automation company I was talking about, they actually did a presentation on how they use their own tool. They actually say they don't hire salespeople. They hire people with a customer service background and they can train mm-hmm. them. So they have all this automation that you just come in a Monday morning and a lot of SDRs, as you know, early twenties, and they just said, okay, it's like a factory line. You do this, you do this at then two o'clock in the afternoon, you, you do spend two hours of research. So there's not this, this, this freedom to, to, you know, to actually be creative and, 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 and to find stuff. And so, so what tends to happen is that that automation takes over. And the personalization just just goes away, and, and the creativity, um, and what you start seeing is the declining response rate. Um, so I mm-hmm. think that people are going to have to start looking into how to sort of uh, uh, incorporate. Um, in my experience, people love the con- we have a conversation like this. Oh my god, personalize it! But then the next step of actually incorporating that and changing the process. Okay, so what do we do? How do we do it? And when are we going to see the results? So they kind of got something that's work and, and they're sort of like just throwing more people and they're tweaking here. But no, mm-hmm. really, I've seen, uh, I, haven't, I don't see too many. I know there's some companies, there's a couple we're talking to, they use it like the Basho method from, from John Barrows and, and, and they're taking, they're looking at 10 Qs, for example, and trying to find strategic imperatives. But it's very hodgepodge. It's not very, uh, very mm-hmm. I don't think I've seen anyone put a really good uh, program in place. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, as we say, because it becomes very easy, as you say, just to throw bodies at it or to just try and run a numbers game to think, okay, if we're getting a 5% conversion rate, if I double this, then maybe it'll be a 10% or whatever, mm-hmm. even though that it's probably still end up at five or less. But, uh, um, yeah, so I think that's the, I think that's the key is to decide whether you want to be strategic in your approach or whether you just want to be like everybody else and have you know, a, a pretty low return rate but the other one of being strategic and obviously as we say it's 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 harder work and it may be it may take a little longer and i think that's the key i think the people who are successful realize that mm-hmm. yeah i think that you know i, I I'm, I'm, an, I'm an old guy i remember you know, like when, when i used to, to work back in in london and uh, we we were told to actually read you know the industry publications so right and then to talk about it we used to have a rolodex before mm-hmm. computers yeah but, and actually have the person personal information and first thing in the morning we used to have to call people up wish them happy birthday their wives and they and that was a level of personalization 30 years ago that that, that we that we would um, end up doing um and then obviously like you know sporting events and and and, and take them up for a beer or whatever else so i think maybe you know people in my generation understand personalized 
patient more and the benefit of it than the, than the younger people. But uh, that's why I'm so passionate about it because I know that it does work. And I mean, people say it all the time, sales is relationships. But I mean, you know, when you've got automation in the middle, it, you're sort of like defeating purpose. So I'm a big believer in this. And, and I think it will, will it'll have to happen eventually because people, as you said earlier, will get tuned out. They just sort of blank it out. Yeah, and I also think what's happening now, um, given uh, you know what's going on with the with the virus and the lockdowns and everything, I think this is a time when people, and I think it started pre the virus. I think it's happening over the last few years where people have started to crave more of a a human personal interaction and believe and and want to communicate with somebody and not a bot, right? They want to con- and so I think even coming out of this, that this is going to become more critical and more important. And I like what you say about. Yeah, you know, back in the day when you used to have to read read the uh, the trade press and stuff. I think today that if you're going to be successful as a salesperson, you've got to understand the business of business and the business of your buyer. Correct, correct. Yeah, and and and, uh, and you're right. I think this uh, this this virus has given everyone uh, time to pause and say, how do you want to proceed and how do you want to go mm-hmm. forward? And and you know, even I see in messages coming to me as those at the end of the message they say, if you know, and so on and so forth. And so that that human element is is coming back a little bit. And uh, so I think that uh, you know, hopefully the personalization. You know, and, and that being said, uh, we talked about a lot of work, but I think that, and I'm not that's not trying to be an advert, but I think that that, that some of the there is automation that can and make sure. it a little, little faster and and I won't go into into the depths of it but there, there is ways to kind of like you know do things and not just from us but other people like topic extraction um, and find what people are talking about using uh, finding if there's emotions involved in, in what people are talking about the frequency they talk about a particular topic um, and then also finding related content that you can do so there is ways to sort of make the the personalization um, you know we talk about the 10 Q's right I mean mm. if anyone doesn't know 10 Q's are for publicly traded company uh, financial yeah. statements but they also give strategic imperatives so to find out if those strategic imperatives meet your company's value proposition then they might be a match uh, but clearly you Reading those uh, legal and documents is, is, is painful. So there's ways to, to, to automate a lot of that um, that's coming up now. So it's not, um, and this is an interesting discussion with one of our customers, it's, um, is, is it going to be automated to the level of, of a, you know, a sales log or an outreach, or is it going to be you know, it's still a, a you know a high touch, and the short answer is it's still going to be high touch because mm-hmm. you know, whenever you personalize, as you said um, previously, is if there is you're, you're referencing an article, it's best you read it. So, yeah. you know, technology can give you three articles relevant to that topic or the customer's posting, but you should read it and choose the best one and mention something, but you can save some time in that process. So it's, it's a slightly different way to, uh, to approach it, but I think that technology can maybe 60, 70% reduce the amount of work that you'd have to do manually. So I think oh, yeah, no, you know. yeah, no, I, I, no, I agree 100% because I think there's a lot, as you say, there's a lot of research, there's a lot of routine tasks, there's a lot of things that automation and technology can absolutely do for you. Um, they can't do the strategic part, though, and that's the, I think that's where you have to, or the high touch and the real personal piece, that's the part that you need to layer on. And that's why I, I believe that, um, the skill set of salespeople needs to go up rather than down because it, we heard a while back, oh, AI and all this is going to, bots going to replace salespeople. No, that layer on top where you really make the connection and you provide the insight, that that can only be done by a high-level salesperson. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's corny, but it's true. People buy from, from people, you know, and uh, yeah. we've got to, we've got to, it's kind of, kind of get, get back to that. I, I, I kind of make an effort anytime that someone reaches out to me on LinkedIn. I always respond, even if I, my easiest way out, I just, <laughs> it's just yeah. like, I have no budget, you know, I mean, and then it's yeah, yeah, not yeah. bothering me, but it's so easy to just, you know, type that in. If, if there's something that I'm not interested or come, come back to me. But I think that, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's always good to, to build relationships and, and keep in touch. And, uh, you know, you never know when you might need something as well. But, uh, but I guess because I've been on the sales side, I try to make an effort, but often people just ghost you, which is, which is painful. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it is, it is. And, uh, and, uh, and then when they're on the other side, they're wondering, why are they not replying to me? Right. But, um, yeah. Um, but so what are, what are some of the other things that you would, uh, would you encourage people to look at maybe if they want to increase their level of personal prospecting? Um, well, I, I think that, uh, I, I think I mentioned like the, the social sites that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, and obviously we talked about reading up as well a little bit, uh, um, 
I mean, I think I'd be careful on, you know, but lastly, if you find the people, you, what we found actually, a little bit of data might be might be relevant. Mm-hmm. Here. Um, I, I, we found uh, like close to 95% people have a LinkedIn profile, but we're in 11% people have a Twitter profile and even less have Instagram. And mm-hmm. I think it's a generational thing. People are in a buying sure. position to, to, to prevent them to do that. So we looked at the return of investment in terms of, say, for example, going to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and trying to match, say I've got a thousand prospects yeah. and, and I've got them on LinkedIn, I've got the LinkedIn profiles and we programmatically did this to match them in, in those other platforms. And the amount of time it took to actually do that um, uh, and then and then find the right person and you only got an 11% match, we found it wasn't worth the effort. Mm-hmm. So um, what I would recommend is, you know, focus mainly on LinkedIn because you have company name associated with yeah. the prospect's name. If you have someone that's a really high prospect, and I've had people tell me, and this is um, one of my advisors, the VP of sales of uh, of one company, and she told me that um, she actually found a prospect as she worked at at Oracle and two or three things and went to a profile and went to a a different social site, and that really worked. So I think that if you can incorporate that, so I would be a little bit, um, I'd be a little, I try to save people some time as opposed to going to the, you know, uh, the, the other, other sites and than the major ones on SoundCloud and stuff like that, YouTube. It, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's really time consuming. But if you have a prospect that's really worth the effort, then, 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 then go, then go through it and do the Google searches. Um, you know, so that, that's, that's kind of what we found. Yeah, and I think that's good advice because I mean I think at the end of the day, if you're going to be more focused and more personalized in your outreach, you've got to um uh, you've got you've got to narrow your field a little bit. I mean, make your choices in terms of like say, okay, I'm going to focus on LinkedIn. I'm not going to like go spread myself really thin. You've got to kind of make, you know, balance it out and make some whichever the right choices are for you and then really focus in on doing it well. Yeah, and then I mean, if you if you're selling to a financial uh, to CFOs, for example, a financial yeah. services product, chances of them being on Instagram, you know, uh, probably a middle aged guy in his fifties is very highly yeah. unlikely. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but if you you know, I mean, if you're selling to sales automation, you know, and you've got a younger sales leaders in their thirties and fairly good mix of you know male female, um, yeah. you know, then then maybe you'd be better off. So it also depends what you're selling and and, and, and yeah. you're selling it to. And as as the buyers you know get a little older you know so they, they would come from that digital generation so i think mm-hmm. this is going to be you know definitely something not going to go away it's going to be something but good um good point though i think on the generational thing yeah i think as people get older then these other media may you know become more important we hey you might have to sell by tiktok soon if you're not careful <laughs> i still don't really know what tiktok is but that's okay <laughs> No, it's well, two of us. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Ankesh, this has been great. Uh, we're bumping up against the end of our time. All of Ankesh's information and his company information will be in his contributor bio along with this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Uh, sure. Well, this chat is, is basically a platform to help with personalization. We, we, we sort of got a, a, a little LinkedIn widget that gives you, uh, within a few seconds, personalized information about the prospect to give you topics that you can use as icebreakers and related content. So it's uh, really simple and it's free. So, uh, you know, try it out. Wow, absolutely. I'll try that myself. Thank you. All right. Well, listen, my, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. And again, thanks, Ankesh, for joining us today. Mm-hmm.